Hey guys, my name's Andrew and I'm a fashion and portrait photographer from Seattle. And today I'm gonna to be showing you my favorite technique for editing your backgrounds in Photoshop so that they look perfect every single time. This is great when you're working in a studio setting and you're using a paper backdrop and you wanna just smooth out the wrinkles in the background or fix footprints on the ground, things like that. So let's get into it. So first and foremost, you want to duplicate your background layer. And the first step of doing this background cleaning up process is to get the paper to fill the entire frame. So I'm gonna go up to filter and I'm gonna hit liquify. And once I'm in this liquify screen, I'm gonna use the smudge tool. I'm gonna increase the size of my brush and just gently pull the paper out to the edges making sure that I'm not affecting too much of the rest of the image. So I'm going up close to the subject's head now and I'm gonna decrease the size of my brush just so that I'm making sure to only get the pieces that I want to get and not distorting my picture in any way. I'm gonna hit okay once I'm done with that. And you can already see that the image looks a lot better just by doing that. But this technique is really gonna make your backgrounds look smooth and perfect as if you're shooting on a psych wall. So the first step is to separate your subject from the background. In the properties panel, I'm gonna hit select subject. And oftentimes this does a pretty good job of selecting your subject. I'll zoom in though, because you can see there are some places where it does kind of get a little bit off. So you want to be careful. If you're trying to be super precise, you might need to go in and fine tune your selection. But on my background copy, I'm going to hit Command J on my keyboard, and this separates the selection with my subject to its own layer. Now, if I hit Command J again on this layer, it'll select the subject again. I'm going to invert this by clicking Command Shift I. So now the background is selected. I'm going to go back to my background copy and I'm gonna select this layer and hit Command J again. So now I have the background separated, the foreground or the subject separated, and the original background copy, and they're all split to their own layers. I'm gonna go over to the left and hit my mixer brush. And these are the settings you really wanna make sure you have for your brush in order for this technique to work properly. So you definitely want a big, soft brush you want to toggle this button on. You don't want it to be cleaning after each stroke. And then these are the settings for the rest of your brush. I recommend screenshotting this and putting it on your desktop so that if your brush ever gets messed with or you need to change it for some other reason, that you can always revert back to these settings. Now, the biggest piece of advice I have for doing this technique is to go in the direction that the light is falling. That way you'll ensure that you're not going to flatten your background too much and make it look fake or unnatural. And I'm gonna go in closer with a smaller brush in different spots where I wanna have a little bit more precision. And I'm again kinda going in the direction that the light is falling and working around my subject carefully. Here I'm making sure to start kind of from the inside and work my way out towards the edges. Now I'm gonna get in closer and show you what happens. If I were to scrub on top of my subject, you can see there's places where the selection was not perfect and it affected the image and took away some of my subject. So I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna decrease the size of my brush and just be very careful when I'm moving around these small details with the shadows. You can see it does a really good job of cleaning up the footprints and the speckles and things that are naturally on the paper. And it just leaves you with this really nice, beautiful gradient. So I'm working around my image, just making sure to scrub out any unwanted details. And I like to use the bracket tools to change the size of my brush as I go around the picture so that I can use a brush that makes sense for the area that I'm covering. You can fix your shadows too by smoothing them out, but just don't scrub them in random directions. Kind of go in the direction of the shadow so that you don't mess up those tones. And again, using a small brush to be really careful around these shoe shadows. I wanna make sure to preserve these so that it doesn't look like the model is floating in space. 
these shadows are really important to ground the model in the frame. And I like to work from the middle of the frame out towards the edge because that's the way that the light naturally falls in the shot. So I'm making sure that that's staying consistent as I continue to go throughout my photo. Also, you can see there's this line in the background that sort of shows the end of the paper before it goes up vertically. I think it's important to preserve lines like that because otherwise it'll look like the model is just floating in thin air. Now I'm starting from the center of the frame and moving out to the edges to sort of preserve this halo effect that's going on and then working my way up and around the model's head so that it continues around to the other side. I'm toggling on and off again just to make sure I like what's going on and that it's staying true to the picture. I'm blending more in different spots that I feel like need it and then working out to the edges again. This process does take a little bit of time and it definitely takes practice to get the blending down. One thing that's important to note, if I go in close, I'll show you that if I scrub on top of the subject, you start to see where that selection stops. So I don't wanna remove that completely. I'm gonna undo what I did and I can remove some of these flyaways, which is helpful, but you wanna keep some of these fuzzy details around the edge of the subject so that it doesn't look like they're cut out. That's what starts to make your image look fake and photoshopped, basically. And then here you'll see there is some pixelation from where I was pulling the image using the liquify tool, so I'm just gonna make sure I smooth all that out. It's helpful to work from afar sometimes to see how the whole image is being affected, but you do wanna go in close and check to make sure that there's no mistakes and that you didn't miss anything as you were going around the image. So here I'm just going around and checking every single spot on the shot and making sure that it looks exactly how I want it to. Then I'm gonna zoom out and toggle it on and off again, just to double check. And once I feel good about it, I can merge these all back into one layer with all these edits. And if I toggle back and forth between the two, you can see the full transition between the original and my now edited background. It looks so much better. Another thing that I like to do is add a little bit of grain to the shot. That way, if there's any banding or weird sort of pixelation that comes through from using the mixer brush, it'll soften that and sort of hide that. And then I like to sometimes use my dodge and burn tools to add a little bit more vignetting to the picture that might have gotten lost when I was doing this blending. So here I'm gonna use my burn layer and a paintbrush at a really low flow to paint on the edges and kind of bring back some darkness into the corners of the shot. And then I'm gonna use my dodge tool and add a little bit more brightness closer to the subject so that she pops a little bit more from the background. Well, there you have it. That's how I edit my backgrounds in Photoshop using the mixer brush tool. I think it does a really great job of making your images look clean and professional without looking super photoshopped. So give this technique a try and see if you like it. If you wanna see more videos like this, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll be posting more soon. Catch you later.